Good afternoon. Welcome to a Crohn's Disease Life hosted by Michael Weiss, which is me. Uh, who am I and why am I hosting this? For those of you who haven't watched it before, I'm 47 years old. I've had uh, Crohn's disease, a chronic autoimmune illness, for about 25 years. I've actually written a book about it, a uh, first-person account called Confessions of a Professional Hospital Patient. And for those of you looking how to uh, better manage or cope with your chronic illness or with Crohn's disease, I, I think this book would really help you a lot. Uh, you can purchase it at Amazon or at Barnes and Noble, and you could even go there and check out the reviews of the book. They're really, really good, and I, I'm really thankful to the people who've uh, taken the time to uh, write that. And also, you can go to my site, which is hospitalpatient.com, and uh, you could just click through to Amazon. Um, well, today's show uh, is called The Emotional Effects of the, quote, Journey to Diagnosis, close quote reason why I picked this topic, and by the way, it's Sunday, May 9th, 2010, Mother's Day, so happy Mother's Day to everyone, particularly my mom, who's been incredibly supportive, and I live in California, and she's in New Jersey, and I wish I could be with her, but I can't, so happy Mom's Day. Okay, so why did I pick this topic? Well, as someone who's experienced uh, with a chronic illness, once people know that I have all this experience, you know, whether it's parents or, or people themselves, they ask me, man, my doctor misdiagnosed me for years, or I saw the wrong doctor. And there's an emotional scar that they develop, and, and it makes uh, managing and coping the illness so much more difficult. And, and if I could, I'd like to quickly share how I was diagnosed, and then you know I could give you some tips as to how you could avoid this. I was about 21 or 22, and, and I was an athlete in great shape. I just started complaining of aches and pains and being tired. And while, you know, my loved ones really were supportive, after a while it was like, uh, you know, maybe you like being sick, maybe you like the attention. They didn't come out and say it, but I sort of got that feeling. I kept complaining of severe pain in my stomach and, like I said, the joint pain. Well, I had my wisdom teeth taken out, uh, four taken out at one time, and I developed an infection, and then it, then it cleared, then it came back, and I kept looking like, uh, you know, with the big cheeks, uh, you know, uh, it was... It was terrible. I mean, six months later, I would be fine, and then the next day, my cheeks would puff out. So there was obviously a problem with my immune system. So then I started going to all these doctors. They couldn't figure out what it was. So then my GI doctor said, I think you should start seeing a shrink, sort of insinuating that it was in my head. So again, I'm just telling you my misdiagnosis story because it's pretty serious, and I've learned to get over it by laughing at how crazy it was. So I wanted to play along because... The one tip I'll give everyone is believe your body. I mean, obviously listen to your loved ones, listen to the symptoms, but don't ever lose faith in your body. If something's wrong and you believe it's wrong, stick to your guns and find an answer. Well, long story short, I went to see this shrink who was a nice enough gentleman, but he he had no experience with Crohn's disease. I wasn't diagnosed yet, and he kept making me think that it was in my head. Well, a couple of weeks later, I, I was at some job I had, like right after college. They had flavored popcorn. You know how they put out food for everyone to eat. I ate some, not knowing that popcorn is like the death knell for people with Crohn's. And uh, about three hours later, I was in so much pain, I locked myself in the bathroom passed out and they say it's sort of like child labor pain being a male i don't know what that's like next thing i know i, I was driven by ambulance to a hospital i was in a hospital for about two weeks back then when insurance companies were run a little bit differently you know you were in the hospital for a while so uh my doctor comes in after a bunch of tests and he says michael you have a classic case of what's called crohn's disease it kind of freaked me out, but at least, you know, maybe here was an answer to why, you know, this wasn't all up in my head. And then in order to help me, he handed me a pamphlet that was published by the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation, the CCFA, basically saying, what is Crohn's? What are the symptoms? I read this thing really quickly, and it was like the most liberating moment of my life. Joint pain, stomach pain, being lethargic, I was, I was validated. It, it was incredible, and I think my loved one started to see that, you know, he doesn't mess around. It's something wrong, there's something wrong. And almost like a movie, my phone rang in the hospital, and it was the shrink. Uh, it, it was a couple hours after I read the pamphlet, and, you know, we exchanged uh, pleasantries where he just wanted to make sure I was okay. And then he said to me, 
do you see what you did to yourself now? I, got, I was 21. I got so angry, I ripped the phone out of the wall. I couldn't wait to get out of the hospital to go back there and get all my money back. Well, eventually I got out of the hospital, made an appointment, and I eventually got all of my money back because, you know, my theory was that he had no business treating someone with Crohn's. He, he still wanted to treat me. He had no understanding of the illness. So, you know, I left that experience really jaded about the medical profession. Uh, I've since gained tremendous respect for doctors who dedicate themselves to trying to find the cure for chronic illness. Uh, but that was my experience. But I've heard worse. I've heard worse. So here's what I want to sort of uh, pass along to you. One, many people get misdiagnosed because we bring ourselves or our children to our local doctors who we trust and they certainly have great intentions. You know, they may say, well, it looks like this. You have IBS, you know, irritable bowel syndrome or some sort of catch-all phrase. And because we trust them, we get caught up in this trap. When you have such bad stomach problems, you know, hopefully your local doctor who you've known for so long will care about you so much that they will know to refer you to a specialist. That's number one. Uh, number two is being mistreated. A lot of times doctors, uh, you know, they don't want to lose you as a patient. Maybe they really care about you. Maybe it's financially motivated. Who knows? I'm, you know, there are both kinds. But a lot of them will just go to the textbook and say, well, you have Crohn's, so uh, we're going to put you on steroids or without any consideration of your age or your lifestyle. I mean, you should tell your doctor, hey, I'm a, I have a busy lifestyle. I travel a lot or I, I don't travel a lot or I'm a mom who has four kids. I need to be, uh, you know, there. It, these things are so important, but too many doctors just go right to the textbook because Crohn's is a very... Uh, it's a very complicated illness, and it's, it's, it's sort of individual-specific. But doctors who don't know better don't understand this. And then you get caught up in this very bad spiral of having horrible experiences with your first few doctors you see. And then, you know, five years into having Crohn's, you feel like your life is just a misery. I'm telling you, it's not. You just need to see the right doctors. You need to speak to the right people. There are some great support groups online, like uh, CDSN. I think it stands for Crohn's Disease Support Network. I think there's something called Crohn's Zone. There's uh, the Yahoo Crohn's Group. Uh, some great people I've met there. Share stories with people. You know, and the, the other thing I want to say is, you know, that old saying, location, location, location. Unfortunately, if you live in a remote area, the doctors you see just won't see enough Crohn's patients to know what to do. So if you happen to live in the country or whatnot, Try to, and it, this is no diss to doctors because they do a great job there, but you need to see a doctor in sort of a metropolis type of area. It's just a numbers game. They see more patients, so they understand better how to treat you. So, so I mean, obviously it's expensive and you got to figure out the right way to do it, but if you're stuck in a rut, this is why. It's, it's mistreatment, it's misdiagnosis, but there are answers. There really are. You should be really positive because you just need to see the right doctor, speak to the right people, be positive. And, and if you do have that really bad experience like I did, I mean, I wrote a book and, and it really was very therapeutic and uh, it, helped, it, it helped and helps a lot of people, uh, just get past it. it. It was just something that happened. Don't don't attach it to the illness because you're not going to be doing yourself a favor. Things happen. Just turn the page. I mean, if, if dogs and animals are able to get past the worst things done to them, we as humans can. And, and I think that's what you have to do. And I, I think I've given you some tips as to how to avoid it or how to change it. So if you get a chance, you know, check out my book, Confessions of a Professional Hospital Patient. It's filled with more, I guess, experiences, and I share stories like this, and I think you'll get a lot out of it, and I'm able to make light of it. So hospitalpatient.com or at Amazon or Barnes and & Noble, and I guess, you know, tell your doctor. If you're seeing a new doctor, tell your doctor what your journey's been like. Explain to your doctor how you got to that point, because how they treat you, they need to take that into consideration. I mean, you know, to just prescribe steroids for someone or to put someone who's so ill, like on Azacol, you know, it's sort of like what, you know, the old saying, a pimple on an elephant's ass. 
it, it, and then if it doesn't work, you get pissed. Tell the new doctor exactly what went on so that they understand where you're coming from. I think your treatment will be better tuned to your individual needs, and the doctor will appreciate knowing where he or she is stepping into the treatment plan. Okay, I hope that helps, and certainly you could contact me on Twitter uh, at Hospital Patient. My email address is Michael Weiss at uh, HospitalPatient.com. And obviously, if you send me an email, hospitalpatient.com, at the website, I will answer it. And if you have topics you'd like me to cover in future videos, I will do my best. Okay, thank you very much, and have a nice Mother's Day.